crazy levels. Okay, let's set this thing back to the default uh, default settings. Um, and I want to talk a little bit about uh, this last little set of features on the right hand side over here. And that is um, uh, these, I'm sure all of you have noticed these blue lines that come up on the right hand side. Okay, these are really, really interesting lines. Let me change to the M30 chart and show you what, the, actually, let me change to the H1 chart and show you what that's about. So um, I've been avoiding talking about them because I kind of wait until the last part of my uh, uh, trading session to do that because this has got less to do with uh, entering the market and more about um, risk management and understanding market volatility. And, um, and, and I cannot emphasize how important uh, market volatility is. You know, uh, I, I encounter on a daily basis, I encounter traders that complain to me, complain to their brokers, oh, my broker chases my stop losses. It hit my stop and then it turns around and goes the other way or I'm the unluckiest trader in the world. Every time the markets are moving, I set my stop loss and my take profit, it hits my stop loss and then turns around, you know, I can't believe it. If I set it 10 pips further out, I would have made, uh, would have been a gazillionaire, you know, bought myself a Ferrari tomorrow. Um, you know, uh, um, I hear it all the time. And the reality is those kind of uh, 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 things I hear from traders that aren't aware that markets trade differently at different times of day and different instruments trade differently for different times of day. If you're trading, uh, the 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 euro during the European session, you know, you're getting it a huge amount of movement during the opening of London, kind of 30 to 40 pips in an hour, and the same thing even more in New York, you know, kind of 40 to 50 pips in an hour of trading uh, the the euro during the opening of London or opening of New York. Uh, if you're trading the Japanese yen or the Australian dollar, you're getting that volatility during the open of uh, uh, Sydney or, or Tokyo, right? Um, uh, it and then and then as the as, as those markets shut down, you go into different sessions, so the volatility decreases. And so I hear I I, I, I hear of traders, you know, trading the uh, the Japanese yen during the open of Tokyo, you know, with a 20 pip stop loss. And I laugh at them. I say, like, what do you what do you expect that you're going to get knocked out of the market, right? You know, you'll be in the trade for five minutes and then you get knocked out. And so this is what these uh, um, these um, uh, blue lines are there for. What they are is they are expected uh, market ranges for this time of day, for this day of the week. So for this time of day, uh, it's 5 a.m. for me or going on 6 a.m. Uh, 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 Chicago um, uh, on US dollar uh, yen on a, on a Thursday, we expect uh, with a 67% uh, probability or confidence interval that the, the yen is going to trade between uh, 128.57 and 128.91. Same thing on the four at, in four hours, it's going to trade between 128.37 and 129.11. And on the next 24 hours between 128 and 129.48. That is with a 67% a confidence interval. Now, this is not based on ATR or other kind of uh, arithmetic calculations that some of you might be using. This is based on uh, historical trends. So what AutoCharters does is that we look at the last, um, I believe it's six months. We look at, hey, at uh, 6 a.m. Central on a Thursday, what does, how does the yen trade? Okay, what is the volatility range for the for the yen, right? So this is based on historical volatility, right? It's pretty complex to to uh, to uh, to um, uh, to calculate. Um, and now, what what will actually happen, uh, you know, with respect to what I said earlier about the times of day, is that these lines will actually open and close as the day run, runs its course, right? They'll open and close, and they look different for every instrument, right? Uh, so this is the range on the on the yen. Uh, if we if we uh, let's say choose a different different thing to to look at. So let's look at the euro. Okay. 
So this is the volatility range on the euro. You can see here the uh, we actually have something in euro. Let me change the 30 minute chart. And um, we don't have a, a trade setup there, but uh, we do have some volatility information, right? So, so by the end of the hour, we expected to trade into 104.27. There's a 30 minute chance, right? So, so the reason you get this extra set of lines, now I've got the M30, re let me draw it actually in instead of talking. There's the M30 uh, uh, volatility range, there's the hour volatility range, the four hour and the 24 hour volatility range, right? And those are there because I've actually selected the M30 chart, right? Uh, if I select the M15 uh, chart, oops, if I select the M15 chart, oh, why did I draw an arrow? Sorry, everyone, I'm not sure what's going on. Uh, there we go. If I select the M15 chart, uh, I suddenly get the 15 minute volatility, right? And so, and so obviously these lines really kind of start getting a little bit squashed and you have to zoom in to really see them clearly. For those kind of uh, more experienced traders among you, uh, you might start to realize that looks very much like an options curve, right? An options um, implied vol curve. Uh, and, and that's exactly uh, the kind of thing it is, right? But not based on implied volatility, but based on uh, historical um, uh, movement. Okay. Um, all right. So um, now, how do you use this information? Okay. Uh, let me let me change back to a uh, M30 or a kind of something reasonable, a one-hour chart or something like that. Oh. We've got something on your USD one hour. Um, okay, well let let's stick to, uh, let's stick to the one hour chart. Okay, so now um, how do we use this to trade? Well, we don't use it to trade. What we do do is we well actually I don't want to say that. I have seen some traders doing some interesting things. Let me mention that after this uh, what the actual use use case is. So um, uh, uh, if you're uh, six a.m. now and uh, you're gonna take your kids to school and you wanna place a trade, hey, there's something happening on the euro, I'm gonna go short on the euro, I'm gonna set my stop loss. And you're gonna go and after you drop the kids off at school, you're meeting your girlfriends for a cup of coffee or your guy friends for a morning beer. Um, uh, and, uh, and you're gonna be out of the market or away from your screen for the next three, four hours. You know that you shouldn't be setting your stop loss in this range, right? You should be looking at outside of the four hour range to start setting your stop loss, right? One thing you don't want to do, right, is you don't want to be away from your screen while your uh, while your uh, stop loss is so close where, you know, you, you might, something might have come out in the news. You might have some information from your buddy on, at the at the pub, right, or, or something. And, and you might want to change your stop loss level or you might just want to, take the loss immediately, okay, and move on with your life. And um, uh, and so you want to try and set your stop losses uh, based on number one, current market vol, right, so that it's an appropriate uh, stop loss level uh, based on current volatility. Um, and the second thing is to, to fit in with your trading lifestyle, right? You, you, uh, Many people discount the importance of of um, of that, right? Uh, and so and so, I think that even if you don't use order charters as a timing tool to get into the market, you you might want to consider uh, using order charters as a reference tool to see where to expect the market in the next you know uh, certain price range or time time horizon. Sorry. Uh, and so I say that. Kind of, I took it back, right? I said that people don't use these volatility um, information to to trade. Actually, I have seen uh, people using them as trading setups. Um, but what I've seen them do is I've seen them use them as as a kind of support and resistance, or overbought, oversold level. So I have seen some some traders say, "Hey, okay, if the price hits this." A one hour level, or if the price hits this uh, four hour level, right, then kind of it's an extreme case for this one hour uh, time horizon. And then 
uh, go long, right? So what they would do, let's just say they would say, okay, the time now is 6 a.m. If by 10 a.m. the price is close to the 103 uh, level, uh, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, trade long, right? I'm going to trade the rebound because, uh, you know, it's kind of moved a lot uh, beyond 67% of its uh, expected movement, right? Beyond one standard deviation, if you are a statistician of its standard movement. Uh, and then I think I'm going to, I'm going to play contrarian and play the pullback, right? So I have seen traders do that, but that is not um, uh, typically the the use case uh, for this uh, for this tool but certainly you know if that's if that's your style of trading uh, then um, you know no one's uh, no one's stopping you from from doing that okay uh, so I'm gonna have a quick look at the at the questions panel uh, I don't see oh I see something from Sarah about uh, how do you see chart patterns relating to your chart only so so Sarah if you want to see only what auto charts is saying about the euro usd you can just untick this button called display all symbols and then you'll get only what auto charts is saying about a euro usd right there might be interest instruments where we don't say anything um I, I don't know um let's try a couple of instruments and let's see what they say um oh, what's going on there so let's just see what it said. Do we have anything simply on GBP USD? Oh, I don't know why it's, uh, that's, you know, that, that is just typical for me in the, in the presentation. Now, the one button I need uh, doesn't work. Okay. Uh, <laughs> anyway, in, in theory, uh, it, it worked on the previous chart. Why is it not working on this chart? Um, uh, oh, there we go. All right. So, so suddenly it kicked in. So, so, so we don't have any trade setups on uh, pound dollar at the moment. Um, but that's anyway how you get it. But you still get the volatility information on the on the on the pound, right? Um, but but no trade setups on the pound at the moment. Okay. Wow, that was intense. That was an intense session. I feel like I've <laughs> I was at a, going at a hundred miles an hour. Um, uh, oh, I see some questions coming through now. So let me know. Let me not turn off this this thing now. Um, Okay, so Stuart asking a great question. Stuart is saying, "What is the or order of these of these things?" And I see that my monitor is turning yellow, and I'm going to uh, disable my yellow monitor. Sorry, I've got this uh, this color fluctuation thing that that changes color depending on the time of day. I disable them normally for. Uh, uh, for webinars. So Stuart is asking a great question. What is the order of these things? <clears throat> so the order is not, it's almost latest first, <laughs> not quite, but almost. Um, the order is actually by age, by candle age. What that means is that um, if we ordered by latest first, all the 15 and 30 minute um, uh, trade setups would be at the very top, and they would really inundate the, uh, the 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 screen. And so what we do is we do it by candle age. That means that this opportunity on GBP JPY daily is the latest one in terms of candle age. So it might be 24 hours old, but it's only one 24 hour candle old, right? And the ones down here, there might be another pattern further down, which is a, a daily candle. Uh, I don't see one right now, but uh, it might be two days old. So, so in this situation here, this Euro uh, USD opportunity, it might also be one candle old or uh, two candles old, right? So, although it was only identified eight hours ago, and the this pound yen opportunity was identified 24 hours ago, this one's still newer because the candle age is so it's still a younger pattern in terms of the the general context in which it was identified. I hope that I hope that makes sense. So it is a little bit it is a little bit uh, tricky, uh, but but it's essentially what we do is we try to bubble up to the top um, the the most relevant patterns at the moment. So it's kind of more about relevance rather than uh, when it was how old ago it was um, how long ago it was identified. Okay, and I have reached the end of my time, uh, and so. Um, I really hope that we can meet again. We'll have more time for questions and answers. I have to uh, shut down though now. 
uh, thank you again, everybody. It was super fun. I'm sorry I went at, a, at 100 miles an hour. Maybe we can have another couple of sessions um, over the next few months um, and, and, learn, and learn more deeply about, about the tool. Uh, <clears throat> in the meantime, I hope you enjoy using it um, and good luck with your trading and look after yourselves in these crazy, crazy markets, okay? Have a good one. Bye, everybody.